So, after waiting 15 months, the 104th annual Indianapolis 500 is finally in the history books. What is going on, E Nation fans? This is Ian Perez 48 here. Welcome back to another episode of Racing Topics with Ian Perez. This is, I believe, the 25th episode of this series. And today I want to talk about the 2020 Indianapolis 500. Personally, the race, it was awesome to watch. I had a good time watching the race. It was fun to watch. And, man, it was finally worth the wait. I'm just glad that the race already took place after waiting extra three months due to the pandemic. And I think it was worth a wait. So, where do we begin about this race? So, everybody knows that this year's 500 was supposed to take place on Memorial Day weekend this year. However, because of the pandemic, that did not happen. So, we had to wait for an extra three months to, wait to see that race take place. Obviously, no fans were at the stands. However, the fans were, let's just say they were at the property of Indianapolis Motor Speedway, behind the fences, on the streets, where Indianapolis is. And I think that's very, very awesome to see that fans still showed up to the property to see the Indy 500. They had to look at the screen and hear the noises and the announcing, announcements and all that stuff. But I still think it's cool that fans were at the track still, well, close to the track. And honestly, those are the best fans out there. I have to tell you what, those are dedicated fans right there. That's awesome to see fans at the property of Indianapolis Motor Speedway. That's cool. I would do the same thing. Honestly, Daytona Motor Spe Daytona National Speedway is my all-time favorite motorsports track, and I don't think anybody would do that. I don't think that's possible to get a closer look of the race. Only just stand in front of the track. No, that stuff. But anyway, so the month of August this year, what did we learn? We learned that Andretti Auto Sports cars were fast. They were awesome throughout the month. Um, Team Penske struggled, and I don't think just I don't think Chevy was there. Uh, it's been it's been a good race for Honda. So yeah, and then qualifying happened. And then the big story of Indy 500 qualifying was Marco Andretti for the first time since 1987. And Andretti will start the front row. And honestly, I don't like Marco, but I don't hate the man. He's just not good in IndyCar. Basically a bust. However, to see other drivers, other competitors, fans seeing how much that news meant to, meant to a lot of people, honestly... I was happy for Marco. Like, like that's awesome. That's like a good break for him. And also because of the last name, the Andretti. The Andretti curse is still there. Like, people thought that Marco was going to be a threat, honestly. If Marco won, honestly, I would be happy for Marco. But, unfortunately, that was not the case. But, hey, Marco won the Indy 500 pull. That's still cool. Unfortunately, the Andretti curse is still there. So, yeah. All right, so now we get to the race. Um, three wide start as usual. Marco on pull. Takuma Sato, I believe, started third. Um, Penske starting back at the back or whatever. At least Roger Penske should be happy that it was not bump day. Because we all know what happened in 1995, I think. Or 96, I think it's 95, correct me if I'm wrong, that all the Penske cars did not qualify for the 500. Ouch. But Penske cars were still there, but they were not good at the race, throughout the race, except when pit, green five pit stops were happening, things were cycling through. And um, so first caution came out was for a Rick Ware racing car. Uh, James Davison's ro brake rotors ex was on fire. And um, 
It was the first IndyCar start, I know that. I'm not sure we will see Rick Ware Racing do more IndyCar in the future, or they'll just do the Indy 500. Let's see how that goes. Um, but I know the Rick Ware Racing memes are there. And then um, we had uh, Marcus Erickson crashing. And then we had Dalton Kelly crashing. Oh, Ed Carpenter, the local favorite, as usual, unfortunately. I think he hit the wall, and then his right front suspension broke. However, Ed Carpenter did get back on track, but unfortunately, he was 13 laps down, so he was not a contender. And, um... And then there was some good racing, like, there was incredible racing. Scott Dixon was once again a threat. Because this year, he's been on fire once again. I'll tell you what, Dixon's going to get the championship, I think. And then we get to Scary Crash. Uh, one of the first Scary Crashes of the race was... It, it first started when Connor Daly got into the apron too much. He spun. He saved it, but then overcorrected and hit the wall. But the, but the bigger deal of the crash was Oliver Askew... Couldn't see because of the smoke, so the visibility was bad. Got loose, and then spun, and then hit the inside wall hard. Honestly, that was a hard wreck. I'm just glad he did not hit the pit road area uh, entrance thing, the inside wall. But thankfully, Oliver Askew's okay. He did. He was shaken up, but thankfully he's okay. But man, that was a scary crash. And then the race got more intense. And then pit stops was interesting as well. If I can remember correctly. Um, Sage Karam missed his pit box. I think he got penalized for that. Rossi somehow got a penalty. Um, and then that, was late. that was later on in the race. I know that. And um, Alex Palou crashed. Man, like, the rookies had, uh, honestly, rookies, uh, 2020 IndyCar rookies and Indianapolis 500, that they were not getting along today. Man. And then, and then Alexander Rossi, he was a contender, he crashed. And then, um, honestly, like, throughout the race, it's been Scott Dixon, Ray Hall Letterman cars. Um, Joseph Newgarden, he was the best Penske drivers, of course, as usual. Yeah, but however, Honda was better, obviously. Um, what else happened? Oh, yeah, I remember, like, I believe it was a restart. Hunter Ray and Simon Pagino got together. Here's the thing, like, entering, like, entering the short shoot after... Entering the first corner. Simon Pagano had the run on the outside. However, Ryan Hunter Ray went. Got into Simon Pagano. And then Simon backed off of it. And I'm sure he was not happy about that. But however, it was a racing incident. Hunter Ray did not know that Simon Pagano was going to be having the run on the outside. So it was just a racing incident. At least Simon still got it going. Still racing. Did I say Alexander Rossi crashed? Yeah, I think I did. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. And then throughout the race, like when it was halfway to the race, I forgot to mention that Scott Dixon and Alexander Rossi kept swapping the lead. Like, honestly, like, it was good racing. Not just for lead for some parts, but like, it was good racing for elsewhere. And then the closing laps happened. Pit stops happen after Zach Beach made his pit stop. It was going to go down between Takuma Sato, Scott Dixon. Sato made that move entering the first corner. Some people thought it was blocking, but the IndyCar officials thought it was not blocking. We all know how Takuma Sato is. He's an aggressive racer, but too much at times. I'm talking about last year. And um, yeah, but he was a threat. Dixon was... Um, the competitor for Sato, Graham Rahal was there. 
Like the Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan cars, they were there nearly at the end. And then they were gonna and then they were getting through some lot of traffic. And then and then the final caution came out for Spencer Piggott. He lost it in turn four, uh, got into the outside wall a bit, then it came down on track, and then this honestly my biggest fear. Whenever I see an oval indie race, whether it's the Breaker 400, whether it's the Indianapolis 500, the pit road wall entrance. Spencer Pickett hit the inside of the pit wall entrance, and honestly, that was scary. That was scary. I was so concerned about how Spencer was. I thought he was hurt because that crash looked bad. Those kind of crashes at Indy, those scare me. There was a reason why I mentioned that when Oliver Askew crashed on reactions yesterday. Because I thought that was going to happen for Askew. But thankfully that did not happen. But as for Spencer Piggy, my second favorite driver, unfortunately he hit that wall. Um, he went to the Methodist Hospital. Thankfully he, he was okay. Uh, he was released last night. He went back home. So he's doing fine. So basically, like, he was hurt a bit or thinking something to bruise. I'm not sure. I ain't no doctor. But I'm sure he was shaken up. But thankfully, Spence is okay. The, the third Ray Hall Lenderman landing in car. And then the caution came out. This, and I mainly did this video because of this reason. So what happened was that um, some fans were, I think most of us were expecting a red flag so we can finish the 500 under green. However... IndyCar made the call to finish the race under yellow because of the crash. So, Takuma Sato won his second Indianapolis 500. Scott Dixon came on second. And Graham Rahal came on third. And Santina Ferrucci finished fourth. And Joseph Newgarden, the only best Penske car, of course, of the day, he finished top five. Unfortunately, Will Power finished 14th. I'm not sure where Pickett finished, somewhere in the 20s, I think. But what power just sucks this year? Elio wasn't even there either. And Simon lost it. No, Simon was out of the picture. Like after the contact with Hunter Ray, I think. But yeah, this is the re main reason why I wanted to do this video. I've seen fans bitching about um, IndyCar making the call to finish the race under yellow. Like, oh, we wanted a green-white checker. Oh, why didn't they red flag the race? I can't believe it. Honestly, I was pissed off. That got me so mad. Because all I heard was nothing but ignorance out of those fans. We had a driver who we thought was completely hurt from a crash with four, five laps to go. And then fans were thinking about... About how the race should have ended and all that stuff. Like, oh, yeah, we should have had a green flag shootout for the finish. Oh, we should have had a green-white checkered and all that stuff. Like, first of all, IndyCar is not trying to be like NASCAR when NASCAR has stupid ball sports gimmicks. First of all. Second of all, they had to finish the race under yellow. Third of all, I personally stand to that call. Even if we had a green flag shootout... What's going to happen? Sato's just going to win it all. And then Ray Hall would have just passed Dixon for second. We could have had a Ray Hall, Lennon, and Lanigan finish for the Green Flag shootout. Plus, we were literally almost done anyway. Like, what's the point? Like, if we get a red flag and then cautions back out, and the tires are going to warn, uh, our drivers are warn, warning their tires for what? A one-off shootout? Honestly, I'm not a fan of one-off shootouts. It's, I don't know. It's kind of dumb, but... What pissed me off the most is that the lack of caring and thought about Spencer Pickett after that crash. All I was thinking about was Spencer Pickett. I didn't care if we had a shootout for the win. I didn't care if we ended the race under yellow. I was thinking about Spencer Pickett. And uh, IndyCar made the right call, my personal opinion. They had to. Plus, the race was almost over. Plus, Sato might, would, was going to win regardless. I stand by IndyCar's call. And they even made a statement about it. And I'm like, there you go. They had to. And I completely understand why they finished the race under yellow. But to see fans complain about how the race should have finished and not care about how Piggott was doing 
It's disgusting, man. I know I always crap on the NASCAR fan base because of how bad they are. However, there's no such thing as a perfect fan base. Hell, I know IndyCar's fan base is not perfect. I know IndyCar is the best fan base. I know there's some bad IndyCar fans. And of course, there's some NASCAR fans who don't give a fuck about other motorsports series. Only give a shit about NASCAR and complain about IndyCar. Like, oh, how come IndyCar doesn't agree with my checkered? Oh, how come IndyCar doesn't have what NASCAR has? Because IndyCar is a motorsports series. They're not trying to be sticking ball sports on wheels. For fuck's sake, guys. Like, if only NASCAR was a motorsports series and not a sticking ball sports on wheels. Like, yeah, I don't mind green-white checkers on NASCAR. It's whatever. But for IndyCar, I don't know. It is what it is, okay? At least IndyCar is a motorsports series that cares about people who are into racing, unlike NASCAR, when they care about show seeker fans. However, let's hope that changes when NASCAR's in the fix, okay? Let's just be happy that Spencer Piggott is okay. Let's just be happy that we had a good race, a safe race. Nobody got COVID. Let's be happy that Takuma Sato won the Indy 500 again. He was a threat to Scott Dixon. Honda had a great Indy 500 month. Let's just be happy about that, okay? Why do we... I don't know why people got to depend on a finish under yellow. The whole race was good. I enjoyed the entire race. I didn't care how it ended as long as drivers are safe, especially Spencer Piggott. Thankfully, he's okay. But yet, people were complaining about, oh, how the race should have finished. I know, I want to see a good finish, but hey, it is what it is, okay? You got to live and deal with it. Maybe next year we'll have an awesome finish, but for right now, Let's just be happy that everybody had a safe 500. Let's be happy that Spencer Piggott is okay and unhurt. God, I had to get that out of my chest. I had to get that out of my chest. I stand by IndyCar's call. If you don't like my opinion, whatever. I really don't care. I just want to see drivers safe. I am thankful for today's safety. I had to, I had to like get this out of my chest. I'm happy that I did. This is honestly the one main reason why I did this Indy 500 review. Just to get this out of the way and why I stand with the car. Think about safety, folks. Okay? Let's. If you guys are so worried about not having a good Indy 500 finish this year, wait for next year. Who knows? That is all. <sighs> Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the 2020 Indy 500. It was worth the wait. I enjoyed it. Thank you believe that everybody's unhurt from the crash especially for Oliver Askew, Spencer Piggott, Alex Palou, Marcus Erickson. If there's some other stuff that I missed throughout yesterday's race let me know. I'm not perfect. But yes I had to get this out of my chest. I'm happy that I did. I hope you guys understand my point of view. With that being said thank you guys so much for watching this video. Comment, like, and subscribe for more. Follow my social accounts. Instagram I'm Impress25 and Impress48 underscore IT. Like my Facebook page, enasker 48 in e nation Films. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, follow my Reddit, uh, which will be linked in the description below. Don't forget to turn on my YouTube channel notifications for more content. Thank you guys for supporting E-Nation fans. Uh, thank you guys for supporting E-Nation. I always mess up the outro. And I will see you guys in the next video. Congratulations to Takuma Sato on winning the 2020 Indianapolis 500. He is now a two-time champion of the Indy 500. Seems like yesterday that in 2012, he made a move too soon. That cost him the 500 and crashed. Dario won. And then he redeemed in 2017 and won again yesterday. I bet that was an amazing... I bet winning the Indy 500 twice is an amazing feeling for Takuma Sato. Hell yeah, talk through. Awesome job, bud. Anyway, thank you guys for supporting E-Nation, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye, everybody. Cheers.